This is not terrifying at all. <laughs> Nobody's here. I'm good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Derek Robson. I'm the president of Goodby Silverstein and Partners in San Francisco. Um, I want to start with the story. I had a slightly different intro to this speech, and it's changed. Um, I was at dinner on Wednesday night with someone who's pretty important to this conference. I'll reveal who that is in a minute. Uh, she was trying to give me some advice on how to be a successful speaker. What I heard her say was, you'll be fine as long as you don't have a whole load of charts with numbers on them making the case for women. We're a little bit beyond that, and it doesn't work. People need to feel your conviction. I had a full-on panic attack in the cab. Because <laughs> 42.5% of my slides have a fucking number on it. OK? Not good. So the best thing to do is apologize. British people are very good at apologizing. So every time a chart comes up with a number on it, think of me saying the words, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, OK, let's get on with this. You might have worked it out. I'm actually uh, I'm not American. Uh, I'm, in fact, from the United Kingdom or Great Britain. The sad fact is we're neither united nor particularly great at the moment, but that's another speech for another day in another city. I often joke that every uh, American ad agency has at least one Brit they wheel out, normally a planner. <laughs> wow, that hit home. <laughs> Amazing. I just happen to be that Brit for you today. So uh, the title of my speech, um, I wonder if the speech is going to actually come up. Yeah. Um, why the future is female and why men need to get over it is based on my own personal experience of what's happened to our agency and the critical role that women have played in our transformation. I'm going to take you on a journey that covers despairing lows, a couple of joyous highs, and I'll take you through what happened to our management team during that time and the critical role that women have played in our resurgence. It's a bit like a star is born without Bradley or Gaga or sex or drugs or alcohol which means it's not really like it at all. But that's the thing I had when, I'm, when I wrote it down, anyway. Ultimately, I'm going to lay out the facts with real numbers and argue the case for a balanced management lineup over the next 20 minutes. So let's start with a little background. I joined the agency on the 1st of January 2006 from BBH in London, where I've been the managing director. During that time, I shared an office with this person, Yes. The legend that is Cindy Gallup. Here we are on a London underground train in what I can only describe as my Hugh Grant years. <laughs> I need to be really clear, Hugh Grant in appearance, not behavior, OK? So for those of you old enough to know. Uh, when I joined the agency, it was led by eight partners, all men. We look like the Brady Bunch deliberately in this, in this layout. Uh, Colin Probert, uh, the president of the agency, he's top right, had decided to retire. And the running of the agency was being handed over to myself and Robert Riccardi in newly appointed roles of managing partners. The early years were quite good. We. Uh, in the first year, we were Ad Age and Ad Week's North American Agency of the Year on the back of a six-week period where we won over a billion dollars worth of billings. Things appeared to be good, rosy even. On the back of the new business wins, we hired a load of people very quickly. And over the next few years, we, hired, we opened offices in Detroit and in New York. And then we closed offices in Detroit and New York on the back of a number of client losses. It was crazy, and it took a toll on the partner group. We went from eight men to seven men. From, then we were six, and then we were four. It was like the Hunger Games, but with middle-aged white men. <laughs> we made our first move to change the agency when we made Margaret Johnson, yeah. 
who was a creative director at the time, a, a partner. She was the first female partner in the agency's history, but she'd been at the agency for nearly 16 years. A brilliant creative director, responsible for some of the agency's most progressive and award-winning work. The agency sort of stuttered along for a few years, which Margaret and I often refer to as the shitty years. <laughs> Imagine the, the, the wonder, you know, that, da, 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 yeah, like that, but we've been really bad. Financially, it was really, uh, it was pretty challenging. So I need to translate pretty challenging in, from English into American. Pretty challenging means unbelievably, gut-wrenchingly, god-awful, omnicomma up my ass. That's how bad it was. From 2012 to 2016, we lost 46% of our revenue. 46%. Our profitability eroded by 60% in dollar terms, although we did manage to improve our operating profit margin by 9%. It was hard, like really, really hard. People talked to me like I had a terminal illness. There'd be lots of generalized platitudes about how everything was gonna be all right and how we would bounce back and that they were rooting for us when really they weren't rooting for us deep down. It was kind, but somehow it made it worse. The financial performance had a dramatic effect on our people. We turned over, on average, 35% of our staff every year for four years, and in some years it was closer to 50%. It was brutal. I spent a lot of time with lawyers and with my brilliant head of HR, Jill Sammons, and with the department heads working through restructuring. It was discouraging and extremely hard to manage, on a number of occasions, I thought maybe I should quit. During this time, we sucked at new business. We decided in our infinite wisdom to pitch for everything that moved, and I literally mean everything that moved. This was a vain attempt to try and make up for the declines in our revenue, but we just couldn't seem to win anything, with one notable exception, and that was Comcast. Without them, we'd have been in very, 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 very serious problems, as opposed to just very, very, very serious problems. <laughs> And then when we looked at our client agency survey results, this was our report card on our relationships with clients, those results were at best anemic. On the dimensions of overall qualities better than other agencies and our total agency rating, not that great. But people inside the agency weren't unhappy, at least not according to our own employee survey data. People scored us quite highly unsatisfied with their jobs and best place to work, and they felt pride in our work. And we put this down to the fact that we had terrifically loyal and talented people running the major disciplines, and we still had great people at all levels. The work was also still exceptionally good in pockets, and we were still winning creative awards. But, and it's a big but, we just couldn't seem to win any major pitches. So, there was a moment of reflection, and we knew we needed to bring fresh new perspectives and a new dynamic to the partner group. This was about selecting a group of people that would lead the agency for the next decade, and probably beyond Rich Silverstein and Jeff Goodby. We knew the answer to our problems were to be found from people inside the agency. We weren't gonna solve this by bringing some people in. We needed people who were representative of our agency, and 50, over 50% 50 of the agency were women. We needed people who were loyal to us, who were trusted by our clients, who actually knew what was happening on the front lines, because sure as hell, the four white men didn't. We also wanted people that managed the majority of our people, who looked at problems in different ways, and who had very different personality types. We needed to put a, together a team of people that would run the agency in a new way. It's worth noting at this point, a kind of a more long-term approach to people management paid off. We've been grooming a, some leaders at the level below the partner group for some time, and there was a lot of thought and attention paid to how we could keep them engaged and connected. We knew that they represented our future, and so we had done everything we could to ensure we'd been flexible to their needs. All of the people we selected to join the partner group had had children whilst at the agency and had been on either maternity or paternity leave. We've always been proud of the fact that 83% of women who have had a child at GSMP have returned to work at the agency. We're incredibly proud of that. Being flexible to the needs of a new parent is absolutely critical, but it went beyond children. 
One person wanted to have a sabbatical to recharge, another person wanted to live in Portland. The group that we selected was three women and one man. Leslie Barrett, or Lester Barrett, Christine Chen, Bonnie Wan, and Brian McPherson. They represented the major client-facing disciplines of account management, brand strategy, and communication strategy, and the diversity that the partner group sorely needed. They also had a combined 54 years of experience at the agency. They've been through the good, the bad, and the very, very ugly with us. They were people who knew us and had very, very strong opinions about how to make things better. We announced the new partner group on Women's Equality Day in 2016, along with some leadership changes. I was to assume the role of president as my fellow managing partner, Robert Riccardi, left to become CEO of Argonaut, and Margaret became the agency's first ever chief creative officer. We were now perfectly balanced at 50-50 and the Brady Bunch image works now. The first thing we did was an away day. Um, Rich Silverstein hates away days with a passion, um, but even he could see the wisdom in taking, us, uh, in taking us away and talking about how we wanted to run the agency differently. We discussed what was going to be important to focus on as a group if we were gonna be successful. We knew that setting a confident agenda was critical. In new business, we talked about being more selective about what we pitched, and then pitching as the agency that we wanted to be. We landed on mass intimacy as the rallying cry for our work. We defined that as a message sent to millions, but with the astonishing feeling that it's talking only to you. And finally, we talked about the need to be much more transparent with the agency about how we were performing, to lift the curtain so people could see how we were making decisions. Now, the dynamic in the room when we went to 50-50 it was so different, like so unbelievably different. People were respectful of each other. Problems would be attacked from different perspectives. We were more rigorous. We were less impulsive. There'd be less groupthink. We'd talk things through and then we'd make decisions. And I've got to tell you, the energy was pretty electric. And it also felt like fun again. And this business needs to be fun in order for you to do great work. And that's when things got really interesting, like really interesting. In our first employee survey after the new partner announcements, we found that men initially felt less empowered by the changes that we had made. On the flip side, women felt more empowered. Then a year later, we saw that everything went back to similar levels for men and women, albeit at a higher level of empowerment for everyone. We went back and looked at the historical data, and this pattern matched what we'd seen when Margaret was named a partner back in 2012. Men initially felt less empowered as a result of Margaret being named a partner. On the flip side, women felt more empowered. Then a year later, everybody went back to similar levels, albeit at a higher level for everyone. Now, it's somewhat obvious, but any kind of change is destabilizing. It causes people to reassess where they are, what they want, and where they want to go. This applies to all change and to all people. But that was just the start of the story. The impact of a balanced leadership on the business was transformative in ways that were expected and maybe some that were unexpected. As a result of a balanced leadership, we promoted more women than men. The agency was 52% female and our promotions of women were at 62%. Maybe more striking was the change in the agency's leadership. Women now assume most of the leadership roles in the agency. 73% of our department heads are now women, up from 38% in 2012 when Margaret was named a partner. We're proud of that. Also, we became much more focused. <laughs> we became much more focused on our new business efforts. We put Margaret, Bonnie, and Lester in charge of making decisions on what we should and shouldn't pitch. And that brought a focus and clarity that had not been in the business for some time. We started to pass more business than we would accept we stopped hit pitching everything that moved and really concentrated on the opportunities that we believe could allow us to do the work that we wanted the agency to be known for. That clarity and that focus proved to be critical in us winning the biggest pitches against the best agencies for the biggest brands. And winning new business, as we probably all know, is the trigger for all sorts of other positive outcomes. Staff turnover reduced by 50% to historically low levels for the agency. People seemed to like what we, doing, we were doing and wanted to stay. And that's critically important because finding talent, particularly in the Bay Area, 
is incredibly time consuming and very, very expensive. Our morale improved significantly. On our agency employee survey, satisfied with their jobs, best place to work, and pride in our work reduced, reached all time high levels. And the finances improved too. Today, we have grown our revenue by 40% since 2016. We've improved our dollar profitability by 86%, and we've improved our, uh, our operating profit margin by 33%. And maybe more importantly, the work got more interesting and more varied for more clients. So, what can we learn from all this? Well, the first thing is you need diversity and representation on any team at any level to be an effective team. This isn't just about leadership. It starts with leadership and then goes down. That means age, life stage, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, <coughs> and personality type. You also need to ask yourself whether your leadership team represents the full diversity of your culture, because if it doesn't, then you're going to need to change it. The second thing is you need to be training and developing the next generation of leaders at every level. You need to be giving them opportunities to lead, but you also need to be flexible to their needs. Because if you don't, we're going to lose talent, probably to the tech companies who are all here. Lots of people laughing under their breath. Uh, also, I think you need to concentrate on the basics. Our industry is pretty simple. Treat people well, focus on the work, the rest looks after itself. Get that right and you're halfway to being successful. And finally, if it's really important, then you should measure it and then you should hold yourself accountable to it. And if you don't do that, then you are going to go off the path. In conclusion, I believe that we're a better partner group than at any point in my time at the agency. Um, and the female partners have been instrumental in transforming the agency's performance. And that's why the future is female for our industry and why men need to get over it. And as my old office mate, Cindy Gallup, used to say to me, she was very assertive, if you don't know her, uh, being balanced is, is the right thing to do because, well, it fucking works. Uh, finally, Bo Bonnie asked me yesterday, Bonnie, one of my partners asked me yesterday, what, what, she said, what have you personally sacrificed from the changes that we've made? Um, and in all honesty, it's probably power and some money. And my only regret is I didn't do it earlier. I wish I'd done it five years ago. And if we had done that, we might have agencies in Detroit, we might have a bigger office in New York. So for the men out there, there is nothing to be afraid of. So just go and do it. Thank you.